Hello and welcome back to Master Tech and in today's video I am going to show you how to connect Ignition to SQL and then also how to read and write to and from SQL from an Ignition display. So first off sorry if I sound a little under the weather in this video I'm definitely kind of stuffed up from the holidays but I'm really excited to continue the Ignition tutorial series we've been doing on the channel. If you have any super basic questions like what is Ignition, uh, what is it used for, where can I download this like maker version of it, um, how to get started with it. I can uh, recommend you check out the introduction to Ignition tutorial series on the channel. This is not gonna be specifically on how to download and install uh, Microsoft SQL. You can get SQL Server Express at any time for free. I've already downloaded and installed that um, and that's kind of the prerequisite I want you to do before following this tutorial because this is not on downloading and installing SQL. But you wanna make sure you do both piece pieces of the SQL install, which is downloading the SQL Server uh, itself, and then also the SQL Server Management Studio, which is a software tool that looks kind of like this. Um, and when you download your s software tool, uh, if you do SQL Express, which is what I did, um, you'll have something that kind of looks like this. It'll say the name of your computer and then backslash SQL Express. Uh, I just made a new database, called it Lamaster Tech Tutorials here, and then I made a new table and called it Ignition Tutorial. Uh, this is all just the setup that I did for this lesson. This is not actually to do with Ignition yet. This is just downloading and installing SQL and uh, tables. There's lots of setup videos on how to do that out there. So I made a table uh, that just has four columns. It has a name field, a timestamp, a counter, and then uh, comments. So the part that I wanna stress before you even get to Ignition is you need to make sure from the SQL Server Configuration Manager that you have SQL Server running and SQL Server browser running or your uh, gateway instance will not be able to connect to it. Uh, and then the only other thing I think is worth discussing here, Ignition is a web hosted TCP IP based uh, tool when it connects to uh, databases. So you wanna make sure again from the SQL Server Configuration Manager that the TCP IP uh, service is enabled. That is all like prereqs before we do any piece from Ignition. So uh, let's go ahead and um, pop into the gateway now. So I have a nice test stand where I'll show both reading and writing and talk about how to set that up in just a moment. But for now, let's uh, show actually getting started with database connections. So to do this, to do it fair, uh, I'll go ahead and I'll just delete the database that I already have in there, which is this connection. So I'll go ahead and go to config and then databases connections. And I'm going to delete the one that I already have. Uh, and I'm going to so right now, when you log into your gateway, you should be able to get here. Uh, if you're if you're not able to get here, then you need to follow the previous tutorials on the channel because I'm assuming you know how to get to your gateway configuration page. Now let's go to databases. It says there are no database connections defined. Let's go ahead and create a new one, okay? And here, what's cool, you'll see all the options that Ignition gives you natively for connecting to databases. The tool that I downloaded and installed is Microsoft SQL Server. I'm gonna call it LT Express, and I'm just gonna say that this is a test database for tutorials. Um, now the JDBC driver is gonna be whatever you selected on the previous menu by default. So we told it it was Microsoft SQL Server, which is why that's filled in. Um, now the important part that I kind of alluded to before is getting your uh, connect URL uh, right so when you have sql and ignition installed on the same computer like i have uh, you can leave this as local host if you want that just tells it to point directly to um, where you're currently looking or you can put in the computer name in there so like my computer name is lt engineering one it's trying to autofill which is fine um, but like, so my computer name is LT engineering one backslash SQL express. Uh, and you can see this if you go in the SQL management studio, you go in this tool, you can see in the top, uh, your computer name and then the instance of SQL, you can do it that way. Um, but if you have a computer, like if SQL lives on a server on your network that the two computers can communicate over, um, but but uh, you, you need to enter the IP address here. You can't leave it as local host. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, do this. Now, username and password, if we went to LT tutorials and we went to um, permissions and we view server permissions, if you then look at 
these accounts, you'll see one ignition. And I made an account specifically for this tutorial. I called it ignition. I made a password just for ignition to use and I granted it access to all of the tools. So reading and writing. And this is where you can also restrict ignition to only write to tables that you want it to write to just by creating restrictions on whatever account you let it log in with. Okay, so the username is ignition. I'll go ahead and pop the password that I made for that account in. Um, and then the database name equals is also important. So we want to connect to the LT underscore tutorials database. So we say database name equals and then LT underscore tutorials just like that. And we create a new database connection. Uh, and it faulted, I'm guessing because I mistyped the password. It felt wrong when I typed it in. So let's go ahead and type it in again. Oh, I have caps lock on, that'll do it. Okay, paying attention to keyboard this time and let's try again, save reconnecting valid there we go so this is what you want um, if you try to reconnect and it does not say valid if it says faulted then what you probably want to start by doing go to the database status page so no longer in config over here on the left you're in status you go to databases and if this is faulted then this will be a little red like exclamation mark icon and it'll say some of the details about why it's faulted some of the most common stuff is that your computer is actually getting blocked from accessing SQL because of like a firewall restriction. Um, some of the other most common stuff is you actually don't have the SQL Server browser running. Um, you could definitely have an account where you typed in the credentials wrong, just like just like I did. Uh, and then another possibility is you got the host name or the database name wrong. So there's a lot of common errors that you could run into here. Um, but the important thing hopefully that this page shows you is that there's not actually all that much going on. So most issues are likely in a tool or a network or firewall policy that you need to go fix outside of Ignition. Okay, so that's how to connect basically to Microsoft SQL Server. I'm sure there will be questions about that as well because this isn't a catch all. So let me know about those in the comments below. But let's move on to great, we're connected now. What can we actually do with that? I want to pause right here and talk to you quickly about the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. PCBWay is a long-term supporter of the Lamaster Tech channel, and I love working with them because their products and services are all about empowering makers. As their name suggests, the core of their business is manufacturing PCBs or printed circuit boards. This is such a cool way for hobbyists and makers to turn their electronic designs into super high quality and professional grade circuit boards. Beyond that, they also have the ability to support all your prototyping needs with high quality 3D printing and metal fabrication as well. Be sure to check them out at the description below this video and thank you so much to PCBWay for sponsoring the video. All right, now back to the tutorial. So let's look at the Ignition Designer. Again, I have a decent like walkthrough test already here that I'll um, show you guys in a second, but the easiest way to verify that you can see and do what you want to see and do in uh, SQL from Ignition is you go to Tools in the uh, top bar of the Ignition Designer. You go to Tools and then you go to Database Query Browser. And then uh, you should over here, you should see all of the databases that your gateway is connected to. So uh, I have LT Express, but here I can see Ignition Tutorial. And if I were to go into SQL and make a second table in that database, I'd be able to see that here as well. This database query browser is actually super useful. You can write uh, in structured query language, SQL, right here uh, in the browser. So select all from Ignition Tutorial. Let's just do that. Uh, you can do that right here and make sure that your connection is good. So then uh, the data pulls in and you're doing all of this in Ignition. You don't need the management studio or anything else to view this. Uh, and that's kind of nice because then when you get a query that's working, you can put that in a specific Ignition tag called a query tag. You don't have to use query tags. Um, you could just make like a memory tag and you could populate it. Uh, with a named query. There are so many different ways that we could go about this. Check out some of Ign Ignition Inductive Automation's documentation on named queries. If you're looking to do a lot of SQL, uh, you probably want to learn about that. But for now, let's look at a query tag. So uh, I made a query tag. So uh, the data type is going to be a data set if you're pulling in a whole bunch of results from SQL. If you're just like pulling in the max 
value in a table. This could be an integer or a float or a string or any other form, obviously. Now the execution mode is up to you. Event driven usually means like it'll be listening for changes. I like to do fixed rate for execution rates because I can slow down less important things. But for this, it's like just a quick little list of names and comments. So I'm going to check for changes every second and that'll uh, look good on the HMI as well when we're entering new data. And I'm going to use that same query, select all from ignition tutorial, select every Thing from Ignition Tutorial, it will uh, pull in data every uh, one second. You tell it what data set to use again, just like in that database query tool. Uh, and you can tell it specifically if it's a select or an update, but um, I'm just going to let it auto detect. Okay. So now I have a tag called query results uh, that is going to update every second. And I got it on the screen in front of you that you can already see by just dragging that tag onto the screen and telling it to be a table. So oh, the rest of what's going on on the screen is really simple. I just have a little button to trigger a SQL write, and I'll show you the script that we're executing in just a second. And then I have a name and comments field where uh, their text fields so we can enter whatever data we want in there and then I have this counter variable that's going to count up every time I send new data to SQL so this is so that we can test both writes and reads uh, in this tutorial so those are just memory tags now let's go ahead and um, take a look at the script when I click on send entry when I tell that tag uh, to go from zero to one because it's a Boolean. Let's take a look at the script that's actually going to do the SQL writing, okay? And um, if you want, you can screenshot this or pause this and make sure that the code makes sense to you. But basically this is now Python scripting. You write Python scripting to do a SQL insert statement here. If you don't want to do uh, another query tag or if you don't want to do named queries, which again, future concept, this video would be really long if we did that. Um, but the whole scope of this code that you see in here with a little bit of like logging troubleshooting flair is go grab the values of the name counter and comments fields that we want to write to SQL. Grab the current time when I click this button uh, and then insert into that table those values. And the last thing I do is after I store it into SQL, I just add one to the counter. I reset my trigger tag to false and then I clear out the name in the comments field so it's ready for more data. So again, I'm sure there will be questions ask away, but I'm trying to not let this get too long. Um, let's go ahead and enter some data so that you guys can see this thing working. So I'm back on the web page. I'm viewing this uh, in real time. Let's say our name is Pete Lemaster Tech and comments will be this is Lemaster Tech. All right. And let's go ahead and send the entry. OK, and you can see that table on the bottom almost immediately updated as these tags cleared out. And while that seems cool, it's actually even cooler when you think about where that data just went. So we just triggered a tag that wrote a SQL insert statement. If we were to go right to our SQL server and select the top thousand now, you see that data that we just wrote with the timestamps and everything else. And then our query tag in Ignition is pulling that data back in. So if we did another one and we said Caitlin and we said, this is Mrs. LeMaster Tech. And then we wrote that one. Uh, we send that away and then we have a new entry in the table again, which is pretty cool. We can do Dale. We can say LeMaster Tech's first ever Patreon. And then we send that away. Clears out. We'll say Philip second LeMaster Tech Patreon supporter. That's right. And that's why you should support me on Patreon because you'll get in these tutorials. Um, but you can see there's seven entries really quick and easy. So whatever you're monitoring and controlling when you have a set of data that's important enough to store in a long term database, that's when you want these kinds of tools. And then if you're trying to show historical performance and pull back in from a database, that's when you want these sort of tables and query tags. So. I know we packed a lot into this tutorial, but I think it's all super useful and super impactful stuff. I hope you ask any questions that you may have had in the comments below and let me know what you'd like to see next on the Ignition tutorial series, as well as the channel overall. Thank you so much for watching. Good luck with your projects. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.